Well, with that, we bring in former Republican New York Congressman Lee Zeldin. He sat on the Foreign Affairs Committee, also ran for governor here in New York, was one of only two GOP Jewish members of the House. Um, Lee Zeldin, welcome. Always good to have you with us. Your reaction to this speech by Prime Minister Netanyahu. Strong, sub sub substantial, I mean, mm -hmm. factual, inspiring. I think that not only people who care about the U.S.-Israel alliance should be tuning in and listening, but people who have been on the opposite side should be tuning in and learning. Uh, there have, there's been a lot of propaganda that's been out there, a lot of allegations that have been made. And uh, the prime minister didn't dodge or avoid talking about really the, the heart, the substance of the most important topics of the day. He, he really dug into all of them. He did. I think you know, it's great to see so many people inside of uh, the halls of Congress, uh, really from both sides of the aisle, who decided to be there. Mm -hmm. And for those who weren't there, I would just say there's nowhere more important to be than, than in that chamber if you can be, especially if you're Kamala Harris, or tuning in if you're not. You make a great point. And I was watching some of the applause. I saw Hakeem Jeffries and Catherine Clark applauding uh, while Netanyahu was speaking, both obviously very prominent Democrats. And, you know, this is a, a forum, right? This is a moment. And the, the, the decision to not be in the room, to not listen at all, really flies in the face of this idea that, you know, democracy um, is, is in danger. I mean, this is an opportunity for democracy to function, to listen to the other side if you don't agree uh, with this. I, I just want to play a soundbite. This, this is Kamala Harris, the vice president, and now the um, presumed candidate of the Democrat Party, a while back talking about really scolding Israel for their reaction to October 7th. Watch. What we are seeing every day in Gaza is devastating. The Israeli government must do more to significantly increase the flow of aid. No excuses. And given the immense scale of suffering in Gaza, there must be an immediate ceasefire. That was back in March. Uh, your thoughts on that and on the fact that she is not present there today, Lee? Well, there's nowhere more important for Kamala Harris to be than there. And as far as the allegation that aid wasn't being uh, delivered to Gaza, the prime minister pointed out that uh, uh, plenty of aid's been sent to Gaza. And if it's not getting to the people who need it most, it's Hamas stealing it. The allegations about civilians who have been killed the prime minister talking about how little casualties there are under the circumstances of urban warfare, where Hamas is using civilians as human shields, where they're firing from schools, from mosques, from hospitals. Uh, and what the Israelis do as a matter of practice and tactics, uh, whether it is roof knocking, it's dropping leaflets, it's text messages, it's phone calls, they give advanced warning and they end up with a military disadvantage for doing so. But it's an important tactic that they are pursuing because they understand the need to mitigate civilian casualties mm -hmm. as much as possible. So I, I think it's great that he was getting into the heart of that. But to back to Kamala Harris, she has time and again engaged in, in rhetoric with regards to what happened on October 7th, turning on Israel quickly, empowering people who are on college campuses and on the streets who have gone way beyond what is protected free speech. And what really what a leader does in this moment is lead these people, especially those who follow you. The, these people who are out on the streets right now outside the Capitol, these aren't people who voted for Donald Trump. They're not people who vote Republican. If they do show up and vote, they're te they, they are, have an inclination to vote for Kamala Harris. So speak to them, lead them, as opposed to be yeah. led, being led by them. You know, I mean, there's always been a tension between Israeli leaders and U.S. leaders in terms of, you know, the level of support over the years. Just quickly, this, this is what happened when um, Netanyahu spoke about President Trump, who he will see later this week in Florida. Watch this. I want to thank President Trump for his leadership in brokering the historic Abraham Accords. Like Americans, Israelis were relieved that President Trump emerged safe and sound from that dastardly attack on him, dastardly attack on American democracy. There is no room for political violence in democracies. 
What do you expect uh, President Trump, the, the candidate for the GOP, will say to Netanyahu when they have that meeting what, in terms of where he stands on what must happen next here? President Trump, I, I would imagine, will be asking, what else can we do in the United States? President Trump, during his term in office, he launched the, the historic Abraham Accords. He moved the embassy in Israel to Jerusalem, recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, signed the Taylor Force Act into law, leveraged U.S. aid to UNRWA and other United Nations agencies. And now the real question is, what else can we do to strengthen this alliance to help Israel during this difficult time with facing existential threats from all around. And that's really what should happen, regardless of whether it's a Democratic administration or a Republican administration, regardless of whoever's in charge of Israel at any given time. But unfortunately for domestic politics and because of what's going on in Michigan and polling and an election coming up, we're seeing a lot of hedging, playing yeah. both sides. Absolutely. And allowing daylight between our countries. Yeah, I mean, we need to be very aware that Iran has a heavy hand in all of this and that they are leveraging this. Uh, there are reports that they're um, supporting these protest movements that we have seen out in the streets in Washington right now. Lee Zeldin, thank you very much. Good to have you with us. Um, and those are the larger Middle East tensions and questions that Kamala Harris and President Biden will need to deal with, uh, and President Trump as well, if he succeeds in this election. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.